Father, we give you praise. We thank you for today. Thank you for everything you've done and what you're doing. We're grateful to you. Breathe upon the words today in the name of Jesus that we'll all be transformed by reason of your word in the mighty name of Jesus, that we'll learn something new, the things we've known, oh God, that our right would be reaffirmed in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Build all of our hearts, build our lives, oh God, at the fire also, God. Think through my mind, speak through my lips, oh God, your word, that no external force whatsoever will check this word, but it appears true into our hearts, that we'll be transformed in the name of Jesus. Be that glorified for in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right. So the topic is effective prayer that transforms. And so two things. Um, um, our direction today is going to be in the area of, you know, prayer that actually transforms. You know, making your prayers effective is one thing. And uh, I could go on and on explaining effective prayers, and uh, which is really important for us to pray effective prayers. If we say we have effective prayers, it also means we have what? Ineffective prayers. Are we together? Um, whenever you hear the word, like, you know, the Bible is speaking in the book of James chapter 5, verse 17. It talks about what's the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man. So it means a righteous man can also pray a prayer that is ineffectual, that doesn't have as much impact. It's not enough to apply um, force alone. Application of force is not enough. A lot of people put force into things and then they get minimal result. And um, one th uh, something that everyone knows here is there's a difference between hard work and smart work. And what I always say to people is discover the smart way and put in the hard work into the smart way. And then you're going to get more results. So discovery of smart way doesn't mean you become lazy. Amen. So discovery of effective prayers doesn't stop us from what? Putting in the work we put into prayer. And the normal day, the Bible speaking in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, verse 4, it says, and they continued what? It's, and, 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 you know, and they continued in, and continuous prayer rather was made together what? With the ministry of the word of God. So we continue in prayer. So what are we continuing? We're continuing in effective prayers. Amen. Are we together? Amen. So let me say something here so that, you know, every time we talk about prayer, prayer never changes God. Nothing can change God. Amen. Are we together? So anytime you want to pray, this is going to help everybody in this room. Anytime we want to pray or want to ask God to do something, we're not praying to change God. Are we together? You cannot change God. So this is why it's important whenever we want to pray to discover what God has instituted already because he is someone who cannot be changed. Are we together? If God can be changed, it means he is what? He is inconsistent. Amen. It means he is not sovereign. It means he is not absolute. He is not who he is. If God can change, if God can change, somebody like, I want to change God. You cannot change God. You cannot change. So in prayers, we do not change God. We are changed rather in prayers. We are changed in prayers. So what God has written, what God has said is consistent. It has been there all along. It's just left for you to discover what God is doing and what he has always wanted to do. Example of um, Simeon and Anna, when they were praying for the birth of Jesus Christ, they were not praying to change God's intention. God made his intention known already concerning the birth of Jesus. They were simply what? They were just cooperating with that which God has said he was going to do already. And when he came, what did, he, what did, what did Jesus come for? He came for us. He did not come for God. Jesus came for us. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him would not what? Perish. So, who is not perishing here? It is us. Who is receiving everlasting life? It is us. So, God is already everlasting. We are simply partakers of what Jesus Christ has done. So, whenever we begin to pray, we are praying for our own change. So like I said, the topic today is what? Effective prayers that transform. 
Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we know the scripture so, so much. It says, And be not conformed to this word, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewal of your mind. So God always wants us to transform. There's always something God is doing in our lives. He wants us to transform. He wants us to transform spiritually. He wants us to transform in our minds. He also wants us to transform in our bodies. Are we together? Look, I'm telling you, there's a way you get so close to God, you begin to take over his physical nature. Amen. Yeah. Though God is not physical, but then it begins to have an effect in your life. The Bible speaking in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 11, he said that if, if the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwelling, dwelleth in us, it shall what? Quicken our mortal bodies. It can quicken our mortal bodies. The more you draw closer to God, the more you begin to experience the fullness of God in physical realities. Are we together? Amen. And um, what do I mean by this? If you are sick in your body, you be, uh, the closer you get to God, the more you become like God. If you are poor, you are bankrupt, the closer you get to the one who is all sufficient, the more you live in abundance. Are we together? Amen. Are we together? Amen. So um, this is, like I said, we're talking about prayer that transforms here. And um, it is left for you to what? To get closer to God and till we become like him. Till we become. The goal is to become. Can you open for me the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18? Let us, we know the scripture. So start from verse 17. It says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now go to 18. But we are with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as what? By the Spirit of the Lord. So we are changed into the image of God. We are faced with God. We are face to face with God and we begin to take what? His image. Let me read with NLT here, Second Corinthians 3.18. It says, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his what? Into his glorious image. So God always wants us to be changed. Until you are changed, your situation will not change. Are we together? I'm not saying this, you know, like punchline. I'm telling you the simple truth. Your change, your, your, your transformation determines what is allocated to you. And so sometimes when we come to God in prayers, the thing we're supposed to be focused on foundationally is God, change me. I want to become. Because when we become, when we become, when we become, we begin to see these expressions in our lives. When we become. So don't, make, don't waste so much time asking for things. Rather invest so much time becoming like him until he's revealed to you. Only that which has been revealed to you can be given to you. The Bible speaking in the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 3. He said that he has, you know, he will give unto us secret riches. If it has not, you know, he did not hide it from you. He, rather he hid it for you. There are things that have been hidden for you. Until they are revealed to you, you can never get them. You just keep making assumptions. There are a lot of people who make assumptions about their lives. I think it was, yes, last Sunday we had the um, fellowship together. And when we were talking over there, I asked the question, you know, I asked a very simple question. Who has mastered prayer here? Everybody like, boom. I like, look what I'm talking about. Like, if you pray right now, you know you're going to get what you're going to receive. All of them raised up their hands. I was like, so one by one, tell us, I want to learn from you guys, you know, can you tell me the secrets? And then what I kept hearing is, well, I've prayed if I did not receive it, maybe God does not want it for me. Like, so where you have taken us back to what? The place of probability in prayer. And this is what a lot of believers deal with. Now, when we talk about open prayer itself, you know, you've been hearing of prayer, 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 our devotion, prayer, 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 and somebody's wondering, like, too much of prayer, you know, we're just, you know, listening to things concerning prayer. I'm telling you, until we get to a point where in the name of Jesus, we pray and we receive, then we've not come to a place of mastery. The Bible says, whatsoever thing you ask me in my name, John chapter 4, 14, verse 14, I'll give it unto you. If you've not gone to, gotten to a point whereby you ask in his name and you receive, you have not mastered prayers. 
Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask and it shall what? Be given unto you, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. If you've asked and you've not received, you've not mastered prayer, go keep learning about prayer. Because prayer actually works. Prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. We are in a school of prayer. And like we said, prayer is not, <laughs> it's not just shouting what we're used to religiously. Prayer is communion. Prayer is fellowship. It is communication. It is not one-way transaction. You just shout at God. Pour saliva on God. You know, they just want, <laughs> do you understand? Just, you know, shout. And then you, you get out of the place and say, I feel good. Do you understand what I'm saying? I feel so good. And then me and you, we can agree that even sometimes you've prayed without feeling that way and God, you got result. So what has happened? You've not mastered anything. What are you doing? So what is happening now? It has become gamble. It has become probability. If I do it, well, let me just be doing. That's hard work. Too much of, like, that's hard work without smart work. You're working so hard without being smart in the realm of the spirit. And it is very important. It is very, this thing is not, you know, like, um, is it difficult? It is actually not difficult, you know, um, in, in getting prayers. And I'm going to talk about that. The disciples of Jesus Christ, they were praying. Remember, most of them were actually Jews. The religious people, they had to pray. They kept the Sabbath day holy. So you can't tell them anything about, you know, religion. They, they, they prayed. Just like, you know, everyone here would agree that there are people in different religions who seem to, you know, invest in prayer daily more than you. There are people who pray five times every day. Some people three days. Like the Jews pray three times every day religiously. They, must, they can't interrupt that process. They do it religiously. And then they notice some like, we're praying three times every day. We're not getting as much result. But, and they came to Jesus Christ. Can you teach us? What is the secret to this prayer? Can you tell us, teach us how to pray? So they discovered something was wrong. They saw, even the woman, the Samaritan woman, she's like, you know, for us, we, if we want to worship, we have to go to the mountain. And you Jewish people believe you have to go to Jerusalem to actually worship. And then Jesus Christ said that, you know, like, you guys, you don't, you Samaritans don't know what you worship. The Jews know, but as a matter of fact, the hour has come it. And now is that hour that the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And then what he's trying to tell us here is that two things are important, even in place in the realm of prayer. Truth, that is the word, the person, and the spirit. Whenever we want to pray to God, if we're lacking in those two areas, we're in trouble. And if we're going to look at truth literally, it means if you're going to even pray outside of what has been written to you, you're making a mistake. You're working so hard without result. There's no password. If I have the wrong key here and I'm, I want to open a door, no matter how hard I press the key, I turn the key, it's not going to open that door until I get the right key. And this is what truth does to us. So a lot of people are putting action into things, just with, but they are with the wrong keys. So until the right key is revealed to you. How many of us have a bunch of key here? And then when you have, have that bunch of keys, some, some of the keys look alike. And then there was a time whereby, you know, you have to try this one. And then the moment you came to a point of mastery, you always smile. You know the key for each particular door. How many of us know what I'm talking about? There's that relief. There's that relief. You know, you just pick up the key. Like, even like, you just, I know, like, you know the key. You just pick it and you open that door. So a lot of people are open with bunch of keys Bunch of keys without even the right key there. May that not be your portion in the name of Jesus. These are people who know a lot, but not effective in whatever they are doing. You can have a bunch of keys with to do without the right key there. And one person has just a single key for the right door. That person is more effective than you with so many keys. Are we together? And so this is, you know, when we keep talking about, you know, relating with God in the supernatural. So let me just um, move. Um, when we begin to talk about prayer, we're talking about first yielding to God. You yield to him. You must yield. You know, you submit. Without submission, if you don't start with submitting, 
you've spoiled prayer. And I'm going to give us a scriptural reference to that, which we all know in this place. If you don't submit, prayer is not going to be effective. If you've not started prayers with submission, you've spoiled prayers. So let me just skip, and then maybe I'll come back to the scripture. So Luke's gospel, chapter 11, verse 1 to 4, and then I'll go to Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9 to 13. It said, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And this is very important. I love that this, this as John also taught his disciples. You know, sometimes for you as a leader, you can, you know, you, you're doing things effortlessly. This is, you know, I'm telling you the simple truth. Uh, you're doing things effortlessly, and you just assume where they are around, they are supposed to know. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are, can, you know, just even a possible say, follow me as I follow who? Christ. I'm, I, I used to, you know, I used to even make this mistake before. And like, can you be around me? You don't, know what you don't know what to do. Are you okay? Like, can't you see? You know, you're frustrated. Can't you see? But Acts chapter 1, you don't have to go there, verse 1. He said, all that Jesus began to do and to teach. So he was doing and also teaching. So they saw, his, you know, some people say they saw his doings. And then they said, sir, can you teach us also? So it's not a not, so they, they, in the area of observation, they had observed, but they also wanted to learn. They also want, there are a lot of people, you know, it, it's not, don't mimic things you don't understand. Don't mimic things you don't understand. There's a time I'll, I'll say something. I had to stop this thing. You know, I, um, Luigu, that's his name, is very popular, a popular American evangelist. Uh, he is a man of prayer. He loves to pray. Uh, even there was, I think in the year 20, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 2014 or 2015, he had a big um, crusade, Azusa crusade in, um, in America. He went to a, a, you know, a studio, stadium close to Azusa. And then I started following him. And then there was something he would always do. Whenever he's praying, he would always be moving like this. You know, there's this wrecking, you know, he's always moving like this. So, like, I, I actually liked it. I was like, ah, man, like this, you know, you, you, you feel so spiritual. Like, yeah. like, the man is wrecking. Until one day I was listening to him, and he said he actually had a neurological disorder. Hey. That's why he was wrecking. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was. Ready. So this is not uh, is not spirituality. <laughs> this is is sickness. <laughs> Do you understand? So a lot of people we just want to mimic things. You don't know why they are doing some. Why they are doing like that? Amen. Amen. You know there are some people who maybe pray like this. You don't know if the person you know has a problem. You just mimicking that. You know when you pray like this, because everybody around know you know like. It, it looks like that's effective prayer. That's not effective prayer. That's not effective prayer. It is not, you know, those drama that makes prayer effective. So all that Jesus, so they notice something. Now, one could say that, you know, they, they said Jesus Christ went to a certain place. And one could be like, you know, we can make a doctrine out of that. that okay, when you want to pray, go to a certain place. You don't pray with people. If they took that as doctrine, then they will not gather in the upper room. Everybody will just be weird. I want to go and pray. You go, go, everybody go and pray. Go and pray, go and, go and pray. Just, you know, they would not understand the importance of corporate prayers. And Jesus Christ like, look, it's not about these things. There's a way. And let us continue. It says, and he said unto them, when you pray, when you pray, say, our Father which art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come. Our Father who art in heaven, or which art in heaven, whichever one, our Lord be thy name. Can you see? You know, um, let me see if I can get any translation for this, um, a different translation, Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, NLT. It says, Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. So it's a thing of, you know, you come worship. You come submitting to him. 
Hallowed be thy name. You know, this is how you come. So you are about to have a conversation. This conversation you are about to have is a holy conversation. It's one you come submitted. And there's a posture for submission. Let's continue. Thy kingdom come. Can you see now? When you start to pray, you begin to ask for his kingdom to come. And this is brought. When we talk about his kingdom coming, we're talking about his system coming. The culture of God coming. The culture of heaven. The way of heaven. Thy kingdom come. I said, thy will be done in earth as it is in where? As it is in heaven. Now we'll begin to talk about what? His will. His will. Now it's left for you to discover his will. As it is in what? Heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, like I think I've said this before. That when you begin to discover his will, then you will know the bread for you. If you don't know his will for you, you would, you know, like, you know, how many, is there any bodybuilder here? It went, there are people who go to gym and they have different diets. Any trainer here? We see one. We see one. Okay. You don't do cardio? I don't do cardio. You just do cardio? Okay. So, Huh? Chin way. Okay. Why are you laughing? Why, why are you laughing? You don't believe her. I don't believe. Amen. Your, what you want to achieve determines the diet you receive. There are people who feed on a lot of carbs. They know what they want to receive. Amen. They know the will. They know what is expected. There are some people who is just protein, 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 just want to eat a lot of protein. And then they do the necessary. Amen. Are we together? And there are some people who, they are lean. They need fat in their body. And they need to add fat to their diet. Amen. Are you surprised? You need a lot. You need fat. You don't believe you need fat. You need fat. Or if not, Basi, tell us, what would happen to somebody without um, fat and protein? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> mm, marismos, maridos, just <laughs> marasmos. Amen. All right. So it depends on what is to be achieved. Amen. Don't worry, Pascal, relax. Amen. <laughs> what am I saying here? Activity is not enough, direction is important. And you don't decide the direction yourself. You've come to him, my lobby, and you've come to a place of submission, and he decides the direction. I'd rather spend one hour receiving instruction from God than, and then five minutes or one minute or two minutes responding to him than, you know, spending one hour talking, not even knowing if he's hearing me or not. Because you can actually be talking and God is not hearing. Go to first. John chapter 5, verse 14. Some people cannot believe this. Amen. Do you know you can, be, you can say, let us pray, and God is not hearing you? Do you know? Father! He's not hearing you. You're not in his frequency. He said, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, what happened? He heareth us. So if we ask not according to his will, what is happening? He is he, King James. He heareth us not. <laughs> he's not hearing you. He, he's not hearing you. A lot of people are calling him, but he's not hearing them. They are shouting. He's not hearing them. They've not submitted. So he's not hearing them. So he said, God, I, I, you know, some people are like, I'm so disappointed with God. <laughs> I'm so angry with God. Do you understand? I'm angry with God. Has anybody gotten that point before? Anybody has been angry with God before? You say, thank you for your sincerity, my sister. Amen. I'm angry with God. After all I did. Activity. Hallelujah. After all I did. You know, I did it. I did it. You know, he said that in the last day, some people say, Father, we cast out demons. They say, get out of here, you workers of iniquity. I knew you not. You know, someone said, so it's not about activity. 
Amen. He said, oh, we did this in your name. We did that. We did this. He said, in the last days, people will come and say, we did this. He said, hey, hey, hey. He's not saying, no, the response is a very painful response. He said, I did this in your name. He said, I don't know you. I don't know you. Like, who are you? And then you begin to like, ah, what does that mean? I was going to church. What, what is God saying? He does not know me. Do you, you don't know, sir, you don't know me. Sir, I don't, do I? Have we met before? <laughs> do you understand? Do you understand? Uh, you know, uh, have we met before? Like, you're like, it's like film trick. And do you know God is actually correct? Because you did not know him. He doesn't know you. Some people don't know God. And they, they think they are praying. It's activity. You are just sweating. Mercy. Do you understand? You're just sweating. You are activity. Ah, 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 ah. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Look, activity. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said he does not know you. Because that's his response. He said that, depart, depart from me. He was, you know, he said, he said, he said, in the last day, he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I knew you not. I don't know you. So prayer should be first about knowing. When you know him, he begins to reveal to you deep things. Jesus Christ in the book of John chapter 15, he said that what? That henceforth I call you not servant. You become friends because nobody knows the secret. No servant knows the secret of his master. You've come to a place of relationship. And that's why I can tell you now, ask anything and you will receive it. Because you know him. Because you know him. So people don't know God. They've not, they are not surrendered to God. They are not submitted to God. They don't even pray. They are just acting. They're just acting. Can, there are people, you know, there are a lot of religious posture. So people would bow down like this, bend like this. You know, it's good exercise, by the way. You know, like just, you know, whichever one, you know, it's good exercise. I'm being sincere with you. You know, do like, if you do like that, like, pot belly will drop. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it will drop, it will drop. Just, you know, or you can come to church. Like I'm telling you, every cardio, cardio is going on at the same time. Ah, eh, you know, like everything is going on. This activity will sweat. Have you not seen wicked people praise God in church? They do dance too. Do you dance, you know, mime, you know, and everything. In your mind, God is entertained. They flip. God is not seeing them. God is not seeing them. Amen. God is not seeing them. You think God is seeing them? He's not seeing them. Amen. Are we together? It's not like he's blind. But they are not in the right frequency. He's not focused on them. You can be in this room and you know where you are focused. Even your mind knows where it's focusing. Devotion. Somebody is talking. Where's your mind? Do you have a witness in this room? Yeah. I was cooking. You are cooking. You are eating. You are interacting. Boy, I said the grace of our Lord. Hey! <laughs> 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 Amen. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The same way. What was the prayer point? Ah, this guy just came. <laughs> I was there. What was the prayer point? Who was? Who was what, <laughs> what did we just pray about? And the point which is arguing. I was here. It was not after everybody left. I actually dozed off. <laughs> Why can't you just say you slept off? We will all understand. And we, I have scripture for people who actually slept off <laughs> during prayers. It's in the Bible. Prayer was happening and guys were sleeping. And then when the glory fell, they now wanted to ask. And they asked stupid things. Do you, do you, do you, <laughs> they say asking stupid things. You know, the, you know, God, the glory of God came. And something powerful was happening. And the man who, you know, did not participate in the process of the glory coming was so quick to ask something very stupid. Amen. How many of us know what I'm talking about? Let us go into scripture. And this is what many of us do. We ask stupid things, things that don't make sense. 
God is saying like, you know, sir, have you ever been in a place where a you know, wise conversation is going on and then somebody just wants to say something or just want to ask a question? And you know, with the kind of question they ask, it tells you if they are smart or not. <laughs> or if they were paying attention or not. Somebody will ask questions like, ah, so like, they've said it already, like, why is he asking this kind of question? Amen. They, they are not connected. And I, you know, those days when we were growing, they would tell you, you know, ask questions, ask questions to show you the And some people would just, they just want, there are people who just, they every class, they are, and once they always up their every, the whole class is like, Kai. <laughs> and they ask, they will express their foolishness. And then they will, and you know, this is what many people do. We've come to church, and then some of you cannot wait to express your foolishness. And it's not even hearing you. It cannot even understand. It cannot, like, even you, you don't understand your question. You say, I don't know how to put it. I don't know how to put it. <laughs> you know what I say? So don't worry. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Or somebody would, you know, there's no question. He said, oh, I think I've answered myself. Do you understand? That one is even better because they came to a realization that they were stupid. Do you understand? I, I'm telling you, it's better. It's of, you know, you've, Father, give me, you know, like, Father, give me Lamborghini or I die. Say, and then like, okay, I think I've answered myself. Let me just. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, he said, Father, your word says, whatever I ask in, my, in your name, I shall have it. Uh, brethren, let us pray. Uh, you do, 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 do. You have, after everything, and God did not hear you. He did not hear you. And then you come back, and he said, that, I'm angry with God. <laughs> I'm angry. I'm angry with God. Have you ever been around wise people before? People that are so wise and you are careful, your mouth, you just keep quiet because you know if you say anything here, they will know your, your whole generation is foolish. You know, if you say anything here, you just, just better be shaking head. Just sit quietly. You know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, just be shaking head. Just be shaking head. And by all means, they must not ask you to contribute. I thought I say, well, you know, I don't have anything much to add. <laughs> you have everything. You have everything. You have everything. You have everything. What, what, what can I add? <laughs> Nothing. So this is, you know, like, so the same thing with spiritual things. First, understand spiritual things before you begin to ask. We don't understand spiritual things. We just want to be disturbing God. Father, Father, Father. You don't know him. You don't understand his plan. You don't want to understand the season we are in. God is a God of times and seasons. You're just like, God, this is what I want. And God's like, relax. Like, this is what I'm doing. He said, God's like, you know, he, he wants to send you to, tell me one country you don't like it. Tell me one person, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. You, I'm going to say, I love that country, by the way. This one, the, Georgia did him bad thing. <laughs> you know what I'm Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> or let me give you an example. Let me tell you one example. Let me, let me even give you one example. Right now with what is going on in Ukraine, and God just like, you know, I want to take you to Ukraine. All right. right now. And then you're like, over my dead world. You begin to say, I, I every evil thought from the enemy to destroy my life. I silence you in the name of Jesus. I silence you. And then you'll be like, why is it that there's only bad doors that are opening? For, you know, <laughs> like, God, like, I was denied American visa, UK visa. And this Russia will just give me visa like that. You understand? In a time of, you know, chaos. But God has a bigger plan. So the first thing in the area of prayer, first understand God's heart. But let me, let me just jump to, okay, I've talk, talked about man. I'll come back to this. So it looks like I'm moving here and there. I want to just make reference to when the glory came and somebody asked for very off-point thing. 
tough point. Like, you know what it means that, you know, God revealed himself. And somebody just said something. In short, it was as though when they spoke, the place became even dry. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's one thing I've, you know, one thing I've noticed, and every one of us, we've actually noticed it here. And um, personally, I always pray. And I go for, you know, like meetings. <laughs> Let it not be that when I collect microphone, the whole place, now nah, everybody's like, ori, ori, ori. <laughs> they just, you know, do you understand? Does anybody understand what I'm talking about here? Like, you know, when I just collect mic, sleep start to catch people, everybody just, you know, like, God forbid. Do you understand? God forbid. And so you, you need to, you know, shift. So this was what happened to some people. Let us go to the um, book of Luke's Gospel, chapter 9. I'm using Luke's account here because Luke really, you know, explained what happened. I'll start from verse 28 to 36. I'll use King James. He said, and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, it took. So remember, this was his closest guys. You know, he's, you know, the most mature. Remember when he was going to the house of Jairus, when he was going to enter the room, it was the same three guys he took, Peter, James, and John, who he felt were very mature. So like this, amongst, that is to tell you the kind of human beings Jesus Christ went to pick as disciples. Amen. So if you are here thinking maybe you are not qualified, there are guys who are, you know, who, you are better. Amen. He says, he took Peter, John, and James, and went up into a mountain. What was the aim? To pray. To pray. So what did he carry them for? So that, you know, he will pray. They will pray tonight. You know, like back up. Like, let us, we are come, brethren, let us come and pray. And look at what happened. Verse 29. And as he prayed, he took them to, so that they would go and pray. But he was the one now praying. The fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked, there talked with him two men, which were, were who? Moses and Elijah, Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his disease, or disease rather, um, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Verse 32. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. <laughs> Another scripture said they were in deep sleep. <laughs> deep sleep. Like, they were, in, they were sleeping. And they met the part of, in Jesus' mind, they would pray. <laughs> you know, how many of us know, you know, morning devotion at home? In the morning, like, or even the evening one. And then, everything is going, you always know when to say amen. Do you are asleep? Do I have a witness here? You always know when. You just know, say amen. And I say, just by the way, amen. Surely, high is open. God's goodness and message are followed. And the sleep has disappeared. This was what happened here. The sleep has disappeared. He says, but Peter, no, go back. Hey. Let us budge Peter small. Go back. <laughs> but Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. I think New King James says they were with deep sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. Verse 33. And it came to pass as they departed from him. So they saw, they just saw the glory. As they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, can you see? It is good for us to be here. Let's just say, like, it is good. See, remember, let, let's go back to, I'll show you something. Um, verse 29, he said, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was all altered, and his remnant was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his disease, which he should what? Accomplish in Jerusalem. So the men appeared so that Jesus Christ would go and what? Reveal something in Jerusalem. But people who were not in tune in the spirit were talking about remaining on the mountain. Do you understand what I'm saying? They were talking about remaining. So this is how many of us we pray useless prayers. Because we're not praying by revelation. We pray useless prayers. 
God is saying, this is, now, this is the work I want to do. But because you are not connected in the spirit, you are saying, I want this one, Lord. You're going in the opposite way. God was talking about Jesus going into Jerusalem. Peter, James, and John said, let us camp here. Can you see? What? Go, back, um, no, go back to 33. Go back to 33. It says, and it came to pass. Now, let me move. It says, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles. One for you, Jesus. One for Moses. And one for Elias. Not knowing what he said. He did not even know what he was saying. He did not know. Go to the next verse now. While he thought spake, he was just talking nonsense. There came a cloud and overshadowed them and they feared as they entered into the cloud. They feared. So, as a matter of fact, their prayer disconnected the heavenly realm. It disconnected what God was doing. And so, the posture of prayer is submission. So that will be transformed. When we are being transformed, God begins to reveal to us what he wants to do. And whenever we speak in line with that which he wants to do, he's always going to do it. He's always going to do it. He's always going. There's, see, prayer, there's a lot of revelation that comes with prayers. There's a lot. When you say, I want to pray about that thing, it's not that I just want to go and shout. I want to go and hear what God wants to say about this situation. And I agree with him. I agree with him. Because as he said it, what would happen? He would do it. We see that said a thing and it come to pass when the Lord has commanded it not. Even if you begin to shout it in the name of Jesus, if God has not commanded it, it's not going to happen in your life. And I'm telling you, somebody asked me a question last week Sunday. And, you know, people were giving their own opinions. Maybe even if I end here because of time, I might say one of two things and then we're just going to end because of, you know, I don't know what the brethren have for the sisters. I don't know if they, do you have anything for them? Uh, they have something, okay. Amen. And um, when we're fellowship, somebody says something like that, you know, we like to, the person asks this question because I revealed to us that I revealed to them or I spoke in this direction that we always want to justify why our prayers were not answered. And it's a very bad thing. We always want to justify it. We look so that it's for our own pride. You know, I pray it now happen. Maybe God does not want to give it to me. Maybe it is not yet time. Maybe I should never have it. Have you, has he called you into a life of maybe? It's not a life of maybe. It's not a life of maybe. We're supposed to be clear about what God wants to do. And then somebody now asked, so can we know the time? And then everybody started answering that, no, you are. You know, God's time, you know, you might not really know the God's time. And someone like, you know, when you pray for something, it may be, it, God, it depends on, God shall answer it, but maybe it can come in five years. What kind of nonsense thing is that one? Which one is maybe to come in five years? And then I, some things I said, because now as I'm saying what kind of nonsense, some, you are probably laughing, but sometimes in our hearts, that's how we, you know, we conclude on things. Maybe it's not yet time. Maybe it's not yet time. And then the question is, can we know the time? Can we know the time? See, so this is what I'm expecting. This is what I'm expecting. Can we know the time? And I put to you today that you can know the time for everything. Things should not happen by accident. No prayer should be answered by accident. You can know the time. You should know the time. And that is what we talk about mastery of prayers. Now, in knowing the time, um, let me... Jesus Christ made a statement, and you, you're going to shoot sh shortly for me, First Thessalonians chapter 5. Jesus Christ made a statement regarding time. Because when we build up to time, you discover in the Old Testament, there were clear predictions. When Jesus Christ was born, uh, and the wise men came to Herod, Herod called wise men, called um, the magicians and persons, they're like, they should, and they, find, they found out by books that this is the time when the Messiah was going to be born. The children of Israel, they went into captivities for, uh, captivity rather, 
The plan was for them to be there for what, 400 years. God planned it that way. But due to their disobedience, how many years was that added to them? It was not 30, it was actually 70 years. You know why? 30 years because of Moses' misbehavior and 40 years in the wilderness. That's 70 years. But was that what God planned? This was not God's plan. Man did not enter his own promise. That is why I said in prayers, we are changed. God is not changed. We are changed. If you have not been changed, you're not going to receive. If you have not been transformed, you're not going to receive. Transformation must happen inside out. God hates waste. It's a thing about capacity. Throughout the scripture, you're going to see how God hates waste completely doesn't give gifts to people who are going to use less the gift. The reason why um, he revealed to Pharaoh the famine that was going to happen to the whole earth was because he knew Egypt had the technology to preserve. Egypt had the technology to preserve. That is why he revealed to Egypt. Nebuchadnezzar, go to the Bible, if you open the book of um, Jeremiah chapter 25, he will tell you how God himself said that I love Nebuchadnezzar, he's my servant. So God empowered Nebuchadnezzar because those people of Babylon, they were very educated persons. They were able to advance the world into what, the next phase. So things don't just happen like that. So still talking about times and seasons, it's very clear. God has always, they, all these things, what we're experiencing today, had been revealed. And that's why it's very important to even understand history. Because, you know, understand history, understand what the word of God has said. What we are experiencing today, the Bible has made it clear already. All this homosexuality and nonsense, everything, the Bible already talked about them. This is a person with what we reprobate mind. Everything is clear already. It's, there's nothing new. It is clear already. And the Bible says that what? that the children of Issachar were men and women who had what? An understanding of what? Seasons. And their brethren were what? At their command. So those who understand times and seasons are always in command. Now, does God want you to, does God want you to be in command or not? He wants you to be in command. First Corinthians 2 verse 9 says that what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he come into the hearts of any man the things God has prepared for those who love him. But the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God that reveals these things, even the deep things of God. So when we talk about one of the deep things, the depth of God is understanding times and seasons. And when Jesus Christ was here on earth, he said something. I, the reason why I built in this direction is for us to understand one thing. When Jesus Christ was here on earth, he made reference to time. Um, the, there was only one moment it was negative about time. About we not knowing about time. He said that what? When the Son of Man shall return, he shall return like what? A thief in the night. That nobody would know. He was talking that, but remember, this was before what is death, burial, and resurrection. So that they would not know. You guys would not know. This, you will not know. You cannot know about, you know, when the Son of Man is going to come back. You're just going to think, you know, there's peace and everything, but all of a sudden there's going to be chaos. So this is the only moment he said that, look, this timing, you will not know. This one, and this is the most extreme, right, in the Bible. Till date, a lot of people still have the mindset that when he's going to return, you're not going to know. How many of us are in that school of thought? I know some of you have been in TWC for a while, so you know where I'm going to. Amen. You know where I'm going to. Amen. So some people are like, I know that one. <laughs> I, I know. Amen. Do you understand? So, and... Regarding them, this is the most extreme. If I ask you right now, when is Jesus Christ coming back? Do you know? <laughs> you know. I shall, <laughs> right, so I shall ask you. Do you know when he's going to come? When the time comes. Uh, when the time comes, you know. <laughs> A politician. <laughs> just. This is most extreme. But let, let's go to First Thessalonians chapter 5. And it's important for us to digest these things. If the most extreme thing that is, is coming, a second coming, which nobody would know, which we're going to pieces right now, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Of times and seasons. This is not a subject that I'm supposed to begin to tell you about. You have no need. You know when somebody tells you, 
I don't need to tell you about it. It means two extremes. It's either you don't need to know or you are supposed to know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Either you don't need to know or you are supposed to know. Let's go to verse 2. For yourselves or you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in when? In the night. How many of us agree with this? It's in the Bible. Do you understand? He says, you know yourselves. All of us, we know that it will come like a thief in the night. We know. This one is, you know. Now, verse 3. The, verse 3, now begin to pay attention to the word. It says, for when they, before he says that you yourselves know, I don't need to write to you about to you. Now, it's, it now comes to a point that for when they, he's not talking about they now, shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon who? Them. When it comes like a thief in the night, would destruction come upon us? Would you be destroyed? You're not going to be destroyed because you have what? Eternal life already. Sudden destruction cometh upon them. As travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not what? They shall not escape. Did he say you shall not escape? He did not say that. Verse 4. But you, now he's talking to you now. But you, brethren, are not in what? Darkness. That that day should overtake you as what? A thief. Go to the next verse. You are all children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Verse 6. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us be vigilant. Verse 7, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Verse 8, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting, putting on the breastplate of, of, of faith right there, and love, and for an ailment, the hope of salvation. For God hath appointed unto us, or God hath, rather, God hath not appointed us to rot, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and we turn, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So when we talk about times and seasons, when we talk about times and seasons, it's revealed to us. When you look at uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, it says that the fastest runner doesn't always win the race, the strongest man doesn't always win the battle, the wise, the educated sometimes are hungry, but it is all decided by what? Being at the right place at the right time. King James says chance and time. So it is important, it is, it is very, rather, it is very possible and it should be revealed to you always what God wants to do in your life. And let's just end with 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. Everybody in TWC will go to verse, I think I'll just read to verse 14 from verse 9. In TWC, you should know this scripture already. But, uh, but as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Beautiful scripture, right? If you stop here, what has happened? Probability. Do you understand what I said? Eyes have not seen. That's what we've been saying. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has he come into the heart of any man the things God has prepared for those who love him. Do you love God? Yes. If you stop here, it becomes like, over me, I never see what God won't do for me. <laughs> do you understand? I've not seen what God, you know, he say, I, I, he say, I, I, my destiny is great. I'm telling you. Do, do, do you have an idea? Me say, I don't know, but I, I, I'm feeling it. Do you understand? How many of us, you know, you used to feel great, but you don't know how you, how, how, what is the extent of your greatness? Say the truth, anybody here? One, two, three, four. But it is possible for you to know. You know, it was Bishop Oedipo who said this thing, said that you cannot feature in a future that you have not what? Pictured or captured. If you've not seen it, you can't get into it. So you will just be feeling it. It's not enough to feel. And when we talk about seeing it, we're talking about seeing with the sight of faith. Seeing with the sight within. When you begin to see it, it should be revealed to you. Now go to verse 10. But God can you see? When they put but, it tells us that, look, this is a probability, but 
Can you see? But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. These things that nobody has seen, God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yes, the deep things of God. Verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God no man, knoweth no man but the spirit of God that revealeth these things to us. Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. In the place of prayers, you discover what has been freely given to you and you receive it. When you make requests for what has been given to you, you simply receive it. When the Spirit of God begins to reveal to us what has been freely given to us, it gives us confidence and we simply receive it. So that is what happens when we pray, when we submit. God says, I have given you this. This is what I have given to you. Just simply take it. Let's run quickly and I'll end with 13, 14. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And let me end with 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can ye know them, because they are spiritually descent. Don't pray with physical mentality. Pray with a spiritual mindset. This is what has been freely given to you. So, what is my conclusion? To be effective in prayers, you must submit to God and listen to what God has to say. And the easiest way to submit, even as we worship God, another way we do you know, our transformation is when we begin to pray in the Spirit. We are always transformed. Our spirits begin to pray to God. It says that he that speaketh, speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, and he that prophesied edified the church. If there is a structure of our transformation, let us embrace it freely. It has been freely given to us. Let us embrace it and enjoy it. And when we keep doing that, we are transformed and our spirit becomes so sharp to know what has been given to us. God that I've given you Moscow. I've given you medicine. I've given you cardiology. So that way, even if you might not like cardiology, you know it has been given to you. You will run from, um, which, let me tell you one that is probably easy. You will run from um, um, pathology. I don't know, that pathology was not supposed to be a medical cause. Because mm-hmm. why are you just be discovering things about the dead? Do you understand? Do you, amen. You know, forensic medicine. <laughs> you know, like, that, I like this one. No, you, you know, this has been given. He said, God is calling that, look, I want you to make an impact on earth in the area of neurology or neurosurgery. Say, ah, I hate the brain. Ah, this thing is so difficult. And say, move. That's the direction I'm sending you to. That's the direction I'm sending you to. And say, oh, public health. Ah, this is confusing. I don't like it. And God's like, no, I'm raising you for a time. I'm raising you for a time. The enemy might want to send in evil plague on the earth, but because of your understanding and your position in the public health sector, you're going to preserve lives. You're going to make, you're going to release the right um, instructions. Remember during COVID, if Africa listened to what the West was was saying, we we will be in trouble financially because they said they saw in short can you see the heart of mine said that we saw like we, we feel we're going to see so many dead bodies on the street of our uh, street of africa how many of us remember who said that in remember that statement but Afri- the, the 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 people in africa said no this thing will not kill us they stood their ground they stood there it will not kill us and they didn't kill africa at the end they started looking like a white man disease <laughs> how many of us agree they started looking like, a, because those people who had the most technology, who had everything to prevent, to control, they died more than those in, in where? In the Africa that they said they were going to see death, a lot of death. So God raises people for a time. He raises people for a time. It's just for us to get involved in what God is doing. So anything he tells you to do, just do it. Amen. Can we be on our feet? How many of us have been blessed today? Amen. Amen. All right. So taking so much time.